What's up everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Wanted to give you guys a quick update before we get into the video. Uh, first big piece of news is Lucky Lady gave me permission to film there, which gives me a lot more freedom because I get to kind of lift the camera up and see the board and things like that. So really thankful for that opportunity from Lucky Lady to um, give me the media pass, so th thanks to them. And it's also a really comfortable and cozy casino, so I'm enjoying my time there. Additionally, I played on my first live stream ever. I played on the DGAF game there. They had an extra spot open, so they asked me if I'd like to play, and I was like, yeah, sure. It was like a 3-5 game or 2-5 game or something. A lot of fun. We went in for like 240, I think, and we cashed out at about 900, so super big win. Unfortunately, a lot of that winning um, went away the next couple days. I went back there, and I also went to a private game and did not do too good. As you can see in this video here, I, I just you know make a lot of bad decisions and kind of punt a lot of my stack away. So... We buy in for 300 in this session you're about to see, and then we also buy in for another 300 later, so um, it's about 600 total, and you guys will kind of see how that one goes um, while you watch it, but not the most entertaining session, it's just a lot of losing really. Hopefully, you know, if that's something you like to see, you're going to like this one, but if not, um, might not be the best one. Um, yeah, that is pretty much all the updates I have. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys at the end. So one of our first hands of the night, we pick up pocket threes in the middle position with about 300 behind. I open up to $15, um, which I think is a little bit wide in my range, uh, but I'm trying to get better at like polarizing my range and not be so predictable, so uh, I went ahead and opened up for that, and the button makes the call for $15. We're now heads up, going to a flop. I'm not totally sure how this player plays, I haven't really uh, watched anyone play too much here, I just got here not too long ago. so. Uh, I'm expecting his range is, you know, all the aces, all the kings, all the queens, which is uh, what actually comes out. So, <laughs> kind of screwed on this one. I go ahead and check it. Um, he checks, and we go to the turn, which is a six of hearts. For some reason here, I think it's a great spot to make a bet, which I don't think it is uh, regularly. I'm not sure why I did this, but I make the bet for 20 bucks, and he calls it fairly quickly there. And we're off to the river, which is a ace of diamonds. So I guess it makes it less likely he has an ace, but everything beats me on this board, so um, I just go ahead and fold when he makes a bet, and we take a small loss there for $35. Next hand, we pick up King-10 suited uh, in the big blind. We have about 275 behind, hijack opens to 20, button a small blind limp, so I get a little spicy here with King-10 suited. I don't think this is a good idea, but I go ahead and raise to $100. I'm attempting a squeeze here just based off the two limpers and um, the initial bet, but I think I didn't give enough respect to the initial opener. Um, probably made a huge mistake here with King-10 suited, obviously not the strongest hand, but I'm hoping maybe he might fold like a low uh, pair or something like that and it'll be a race if he doesn't. Um, but you know, or he could just have ace-king, every king-king, every queen-queen, who knows. I block one of the kings, so I'm hoping that's not the case. But when he shoves for 600 effectively, I know I'm probably uh, beat. <laughs> I feel committed to this pot already, and I'm thinking, why did I get myself in this position? I'm kind of just punting. This is an awful play, but when everyone else folds, I just make the call. It's about 275 for me, because that's all I have left in my stack. So we decide to run it twice, and as a side note, uh, this guy was a really good player. I, I enjoyed playing with him a lot. Honestly, everyone at the table was really cool, and I was glad I got to meet them, so... That was the good news about this session. The bad news is we completely miss the first board. Um, we don't make anything at all. I'm sure we're beat there. And on the second board, the flop's not the worst, especially when we get to the turn. It looks like we can get a straight here, but uh, we, we actually miss everything. And he shows queen queen for a pretty massive loss for us for the rest of our stack. So I'm making really bad decisions today. And for some reason, I think, you know, it's probably time to just buy back in. So I go ahead and do that. Uh, we have 300 and hijack opens to $20. And uh, consistent with the theme of making bad decisions, I go ahead and call his open uh, with ace-10 offsuit in the small blind, which is just, I think, an awful play, but big blind also calls for $20. And after looking at the solvers and everything, I can confirm that, yeah, this was definitely a bad play, but we hit an ace, um, you know, this guy has every ace-king or every other better hand, ace-queen, ace-jack, but um, it checks over to him and he, he bets for $30. Now, honestly, uh, I've put myself in this position pre-flop. I think the only thing I can really do at this point is continue, so I make the call. The mistake in this hand was everything that happened before, um, but you know, when the other club comes out, I think maybe we can uh, river a flush. I go ahead and make a check. We still have top pair with a decent kicker. 
I'm hoping he checks it back, but he ends up betting $45, which looks like a milky value bet to me. And uh, the sirens are going off in my head at this point thinking, yeah, he probably just has me dominated. I end up just making the call though, because I still have top pair and a decent kicker, plus a flush draw. I figured it's not the worst call in the world, so I go ahead and put in the chips. The river comes out a four of hearts, which is great for us, because now if he had ace jack, ace queen, something like that, uh, it'd end up being a chop because of that king that would be in play. So I go ahead and check it just to be safe. I think a bet here wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world because I might have ace four or something like that in my range that he's thinking, but he bets $30. It's just too good for me to not call. Definitely ends up being a value bet though when he shows ace king and uh, the four gave me some false confidence there. I take another loss there for about $125. I had some small wins up to this point that I didn't record, but we ended up making a comeback a little bit and I pick up ace king suited on the button so I open to $30. There were a couple limpers before this, so I figured the sizing was appropriate, especially with ace-king suited, and uh, that's why I kind of went with the $30. But I also definitely think my sizings have been off today. Um, I think I just played overall just really bad today. Um, I don't even think I got that unlucky. I think I just made a lot of bad decisions, but it's cool because I can go home and reflect on that. Uh, and the hijack calls the $30, and we're off to the flop heads up. This is the guy that's just been beating me all night, so I'm not feeling too confident, um, especially when we completely miss the flop with a, a three jack four of spades. We, uh, you know, make a C bet here, which I think is pretty standard, but with three spades on the board, I'm not sure if it's the safest play. I think a check there would have been fine as well, but I'm curious what you guys think. I just make the C bet because we have two overs, even though we don't have any of the suits, it's a little bit dangerous. He makes the call for $30. We're off to the turn now, which is a two of clubs, which I think is a great card for us because now we have a straight draw uh, on the river and also it wasn't a spade, but I go ahead and make a check. I think I should have bet there. Uh, the three of clubs comes out. So I honestly still think we have the best hand here unless he has like a pocket pair or something. I don't know what he hit in his range, maybe like ace jack or something like that. But, um, you know, he bets $50 which is a like suspicious bet again. I think he's trying to just milk me with value here, but I go in the tank for a bit here thinking, um, you know, if he has like ace queen or something, he might make this play just to try to uh, bluff me or, you know, maybe get some value out of like ace X. Um, I'm not actually really sure what I'm thinking here, but I, I am thinking he might be bluffing and I think ace king might be just a better hand than what he has. Now, obviously with three spades out there, you know, a paired board, a straight draw that's not the case um, but I go ahead and make the call and he uh, shows quads um, yeah he definitely milked me he's been uh, outplaying me all night and I've just been completely outclassed by this guy so pretty bad session so far we lose about hundred ten dollars then so up to this point we uh, made back a little bit of money we're at about two hundred dollars now in the middle position and we pick up Kings I didn't include those hands because they were kind of boring but um, basically, most of them ended on the flop, so we made some money back, and I'm feeling good. Uh, I opened a $15 with the Kings. You know, maybe we could have opened a bit higher, but I think I want to polarize my range and just keep it consistent, so I just did a $15 there. Um, hijack calls and the big blind calls as well, so we're now off to a flop. You know, surely an ace is not going to come out on the flop. We have Kings. It's the only card we don't want to see, and it does. It comes out on the flop, and I know these guys definitely have an ace in their range. Um, you know checks over all around so I'm okay with that you know I was the preflop aggressor so I was kind of expecting it to check through but the nine of hearts comes out here on the turn which I don't think really improves anybody the big blind checks and I tell myself I'm gonna make a bet of $15 and if I get raised I'm gonna just get out of this pot now the interesting thing is um, I'm a little tilted at this point just from how I've been playing I'm more mad at myself than my luck I think I've just been doing really bad overall um, hijack raises to $45 and you know I've told myself well if I get raised I'm gonna fold here but I have a little too much time to think I uh, I feel like because the big blind folds and I think yeah you know what it's uh, about like $30 more let's just make the call and see what happens which you know I I don't know I, th I think we still have a pretty good hand here the only thing that really beats me is like an ace in his range which he definitely could have but the ace of hearts comes out here I think this is good for us because we're holding the king of hearts, but for some reason I check. Um, don't know why. I think I could have definitely bluffed that, but he shows ace eight of clubs. And normally I would rebuy, but you know what? I don't think today's my day, so I go ahead and call it. And that wraps up the session at Lucky Lady. I think it was August 23rd, um, August 23rd or 22nd. 
I forgot, but yeah, that was the session there. Uh, like I said, not not the best one. I played really bad. Um, I made a lot of bad decisions, but I'm still learning, so it is what it is. Um, I'll give you guys kind of an update on where we're at right now. I'll, I'll put it up right here, but we were uh, up a thousand something overall, I think, in my bankroll about three or four days ago. Um, right after the live stream session, I had a really good session, and obviously I went up a lot, but the uh, Lucky Lady session after that, and then the private game I played after that, took some pretty big losses. So now we're back down um, overall, about uh, two or three hundred dollars down again. So not the best, but um, you know what? Gonna stay positive and just hope the next session's better. Try to make better decisions. Probably gonna take a week break or something just to kind of detilt and make sure I'm making um, you know decisions that aren't emotional or tilted and that's kind of where i'm gonna go from there so yeah thanks for watching guys um i'll try to get another video out in a week or two also thanks for the uh, subscribers everybody we hit 600 subscribers everyone that watches online and everyone that subs to me in person i, I really appreciate it um you know we're getting there so thanks again for all the support we've had a lot of growth so far and i will see you guys on the next one